Finally, after five long and painful but fulfilling years of hard work, my book, The Efficientpreneur, A Practical Guide to Transition from Employee to Efficient Entrepreneur, is now available on Amazon. The Efficientpreneur hit number one in five different Amazon stores during the first week of its launch, making it a number one international bestseller. If you are an employee who wants to transition into efficient entrepreneur or you are a successful business owner and wants to 10x your performance, profitability and freedom with less time, effort and cost, this book is for you. You can download two free chapters of the book from ahmedalkirimli.com forward slash free book or buy the complete version of the book from Amazon or the efficientpreneur.com. Hi everyone, this is Ahmed Karimni and welcome to Be Efficient TV. The mission of this web TV show is to boost the efficiency of your business and life with tips and tricks from leading experts. And today I have with me Luca Di Stefani, or Big Luca. He is an internet marketer and expert in affiliate marketing, uh, digital products, and uh, self-published uh, books. Welcome to the show, Luca. Hi, hi, thank you for having me. I'm honored to be here. Cheers. Thank you. My pleasure. Who is Big Luca? Well, Big Luca is somebody that uh, started out, you know, against the odds, I would say, and became interested in online marketing and self-development at like 22, 23. And before becoming an online marketer and now a leading online marketer uh, strategist, actually, I deal with strategies. I was a bouncer in the UK, so I used to do security in nightclubs, bouncing people up. And, uh, you know, I, well, you know, I certainly wasn't wealthy, let's put it that way. My family was originally middle class. Then actually, well, my father used to earn quite a bit of money. He was the old time nine to five guy and he was an executive in Italy. He used to earn quite a bit of money. Then he got fired uh, for reasons I won't disclose. Uh, and then he was he was without job, you know, for five years. My parents separated. I want to get into that, but you know, you know, my family fell apart, and it was up to my mom to take care of everybody. But let's let's not go there. But anyway, then I, you know, I lost three years of school. I made up for it by studying uh, the two syllabus of, of you know two years in one year. So I, I basically completed high school in three years uh, instead of five. But I had lost three years, so I still lagging one year behind. Then I went to the UK for my university. And to be completely honest, I, I had money because my mom had money saved for my university. Uh, and she wired the money to me. That was a huge mistake. She wired three years worth of money to me. Mm. And I squandered it all. I, I, spent it, I wasted it all in, in about 10 months. And then my mom looked at me and I said, well, listen, darling. And my mom loves me to be. I mean, she's a typical Italian mom. She was like, it's over. No more money. That was the money that we had saved for you. <laughs> it's up to you. So I became a bouncer and it was a very tough experience. It ended with, with 20 people, 30 people kicking my head in a club, me and a, another uh, a Polish guy actually. And and then, you know, I moved back to Italy because my dad had cancer and has since he has since passed away in uh, December 2015 actually. And, uh, and when I moved back to Italy, I started to work for a detective agency. Uh, they were paying me peanuts, but it was interesting, and, and I became interested in how to earn more money because I wasn't earning any on my day job. And uh, I got involved with the secret, with the law of attraction, thinking grow rich, you know, rich dad, poor dad is pretty much everybody's path, right? So, uh, you know, thinking grow rich, which by the way, is, I still have it. I see your thinking grow rich, and if you open it, there is a goal written, okay, you cannot see it, but I will read it to you, which is I, I earn 10,000 euros by the first of June 2015 uh, that was my goal originally because everybody shoots you know for 10k you know right now it's it's much more than that but it's, it's nice to, to find that's my I think in Rolish book so what did you what did you when why you decided to go to England and what did you study there and did you finish your university or no yeah I graduated uh, contemporary Chinese studies I speak Chinese I went to the UK because we didn't have money to, for me to go study uh, in the US, actually, my dream. And still, to these days, I'm jealous of people studying in the US. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I didn't like the university, to be honest, but it was very good for me because I learned English, you know, to native level, pretty much, you know, mm -hmm. if you don't consider my accent. But uh, 
uh, so all around it was a very good experience. I didn't like the university one bit. Don't get me started on that. I I had the wrong expectation. I expected you know the university to be full of geniuses, and it just wasn't the case for my university. I'm not talking about all the universities, but just not me. I completed it. Yes. Mm. How, how old are you now? 26. I turned 26, 26 the 30th of September last year now because it's 2018. How did you start in the internet marketing space or online space? Yeah, well, it was basically I was working in this detective agency and I had already got involved with self development, thinking rich, and especially with Bob Proctor, who is the guy that opens the secret. He's the first character that you see, the first persona. And, and so this Bob Proctor talks about the fact that rich people leverage, they apply a leverage on their time by setting up multiple sources of income. And that made immediate sense to me. I was like, yeah, but how do I do it? So hmm. I started reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, and he, he used to talk about real estate, but I didn't have any money for real estate. The Italian market is different. You cannot access any line of credit. It's very difficult. Italians don't have credit cards, for example. It's very rare that you're given one. Uh, even right, well, I don't have any bank accounts in Italy. We can get there. But in, in the U.S., uh, they gave me a credit card right away, pretty much. In Italy, I would never be able to, to get one, even because my company is not in Italy. But yeah, that's another mm. story. But it's, not even, but it's not in America either, but you're given one in America, not in Italy. Nevertheless, I started with online marketing because I wanted, you know, I was chasing the past, this passive income dream. And I got originally involved with uh, Kindle Publishing, uh, which is basically publishing uh, ebooks on Amazon, and and anytime somebody buys them, of course, you don't have to be in front of your PC, so you know you you make royalties. And it was very hard at the beginning; it took me a year. I mean, I was, uh, you know, that I mean, when you get online, there are a lot of people that you perceive to be gurus that then you know turns up not not to be that, you know. So it, it took so, me. So just to, sorry to interrupt you here. Yeah, yeah. First, you worked as a volunteer, or what was your job in this training company? And uh, you definitely learned from the speakers or from the background what they are doing, right? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, uh, no, I, I just got involved with self development. Uh, okay. It wasn't, you know, just reading books. And okay. my company was a detective agency company. So it was not a self development company. It was okay. A agency. So you were yeah. working with that company? Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was an employee. I mean, it was a standard employee mm -hmm. being paid peanuts for, you know, it was interesting because I got to know, you know, how to conduct an investigation, how to chase people, mm -hmm. to report, mm -hmm. you know, pictures, a lot of people cheating on each other, a lot of uh, in, uh, an industrial espionage, I think you call it, like, you know, companies try to copy each other and to copy the copyrighted material, whatever. And so it was very interesting and because I was keeping also the relationships with foreign countries because we mm. they have branches but but they, yes i got involved with online marketing and the first but no, thing no, but how did you get involved with this self-publishing company that you said about uh yeah i mean uh the, the self-publishing is it wasn't a company i mean it was amazon i was publishing okay. on amazon so uh, i was basically outsourcing ebooks and publishing them on amazon and uh the, the, the way I got involved with it is that I looked for how to make passive income online. And I found some, some guy's blog. And this guy is, 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 a, uh, is involved with self-development himself. He's a good guy for self-development. For making money online, not so much. But mm. at the time, you know, I learned, I, I, I watched some of his videos. Uh, and so I tried to do everything myself, but things weren't working. And then I struggled and then I found kind of my own way and I started making some money. And then it was very quick. It was very exponential. You uh, researched your way into internet marketing and you made the things worked or you worked with some mentors who's already making it there uh, online and, and you learned well, from Well, I didn't have, consider that I didn't have any money. I mean, it was a challenge for me to buy a course. Uh, I remember actually my mom uh, bought one for me, to be completely mm -hmm. honest. Uh, and she also loaned me uh, 500 bucks early in the days mm -hmm. when she saw things were working. But yes, I researched my way. Uh, I mean, I found people uh, online, but for free. So on YouTube or blogs, uh, 
But again, I eventually found out that finding the right people to follow is really, really difficult because there's a lot of smoking glasses yes. and so they don't have any idea what the hell they're talking about. You can spend up to two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars before you find the right person that okay. might coach, coach you for five hundred dollars, but he is the right one. Yeah, it's amazing, and it's amazing mm. how many people. Now I try, you know, to teach this to my students. Right now, I have a lot of students and. Uh, my, you know, my main area of expertise is no BS online marketing. So everything concerned with the strategies to actually monetize your online business, which has everything to do with price, the right funnel, and the right way to present the product in front of clients, especially when it comes to selling information products and consulting. Uh, so really, also affiliate marketing, and and that's what I do now. You know, I'm I'm an online marketing strategist, so I, you know, very good at strategically engineer businesses to make a ton of money to extract the maximum amount of money from you know from their clients but at the beginning it was very hard for me to uh, which which year you started uh i started back in 2000 and well actually it was late 2014 because my dad passed away in 2015 december so it must have been no, December 2015, so it must have been a year earlier because when my dad was passing away was the point in which I was actually beginning to earn money. My dad, you know, is not alive to see it, but yeah, I remember my dad passed away and I quit the day job three days later and I was already earning $3,500 that month. So how, how did you start? You started with the self-published book, Kindle and this stuff and yeah. can you take us through the process? Yeah, the process uh, is actually quite quite simple. I mean, you look for keywords that people are already looking for on Amazon. Uh, these keywords are really topics or niches, okay? So a niche contains different keywords. So you can have martial arts and then people look for uh, how to play karate or jiu-jitsu moves or these kind of things. Hmm. And you outsource eBooks on those topics and you publish them on Amazon. And you publish the Kindle version, the Create Space version, which is really the paperback for free. You don't need to spend any more money. And the audiobook, okay? Yeah. Uh, and, and when people buy your books, you make money. But the reality is that uh, iPhone courses, which used to work, but now it got more competitive. And I, I then launched one of my courses. And I, I can say proudly that I was actually the first guy, I believe, online for nonfiction to actually figuring out how the Amazon algorithm works. And uh, there, there is one way. I mean, you cannot invent how the you know, Amazon algorithm works. So I reverse engineered the process. And I did it, by the way, the, by sheer luck. I mean, the first time I didn't know what the hell I was doing. But then mm -hmm. I got extremely good at figuring out what Amazon wanted. And so I was checking my students' results for December. You know, now they're making a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And outside of my course, I don't want to brag, but you know, pretty much nobody's making that kind of income because uh, you know that. I mean, if you try to guess your way to flick through things, it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, How you know. much usually like you, you're going to do re the research for the keywords, outsource on Upwork or other to other people to write the book? Usually they are short, definitely books. Like how long is the books? And well, how much is this cost to outsource all to complete and how long it takes? Like how many books yeah. you have done and are you still doing it or it's not working anymore? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So first of all, uh, yes, this is definitely still working. It's a great way to start. It's a great way to scale up. To, I believe the cap is really $10,000 a month on a stable way. Now, last month, and I myself have made much more than that, but on an average basis, I believe it's a cup business. Uh, it's a very easy business because you really don't have to become an online marketer to do that, uh, which is really what annoys some people because it, you know, you don't have to drive traffic. For example, Amazon does that for you, uh, and so there are a lot of things that you know make makes the business easy. Uh, I'm not that heavily publishing anymore because, of course. I can I can do much more profitable things like creating video courses or consulting. People pay me ten thousand dollars a day to come here in Dubai and consult with me for a day. So of course I prefer to do a day of consulting rather than spending one day producing books that they will give me two thousand dollars. I mean it's pretty evident. And uh, a book you can spend two hundred to three hundred dollars. It depends on what you do now. 
Uh, it depends how much money you pay for a book. Usually, even right now, for a $10,000 book, you spend 100 bucks. So it's a cent uh, a word. And uh, uh, yeah, 200 to 300 bucks. Uh, the keyword research part is really 70%. And it's amazing how many people miss this because, uh, of course, there are a lot of you know fake gurus and people talking, and you cannot avoid it. But the low barrier of entrance for Kindle publishing really motivates monkeys to come. Mm. And it's amazing. I mean, when you when you want a book, what is it that you do? You go on Amazon and you look for a keyword, right? And you press return. If my book doesn't show up, you're not going to buy it. But, end of story, right? So that's really. But simple. usually, sometimes based on sales. Amazon push it up, right? So, yeah. so also they have to market it through other channels. To no, no, no. Now that's one mistake that people make. There is no marketing outside of Amazon for books, uh, especially if you don't have a pre-existing reputation. Now, if you have a personal brand, a lot of people confuse personal branding. Now, and they say, what about if you know Tony Robbins publishes books? But that's not self-publishing. That's personal branding that publishes a book. Ty Lopez, that guy can make money in regardless because he's got personal branding. Now, if you publish books under keywords that people are already looking for, nobody knows about you, the demand has, already, uh, has to be already present. You don't market books outside of Amazon for the very simple reason that people organically go on Amazon. Okay, so People organically go on Amazon, they look for keywords, they press return, they find your books, and they're going to buy it. Now, you said that Amazon pushes your book up due to sales. Yes, but how do you get sales in the first place? You're right. How about the, the Amazon ads? Yeah, Amazon ads, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I was talking to one of my top students, and mm -hmm. uh, to some of my top students, they all say the same thing. My experience has been bad. So, mm -hmm. uh, for my niche, it doesn't work. Uh, students in the same niche confirm that. Now, I have to admit that sometimes they work. It's very important to notice that uh, the royalty you're earning is gross. Uh, I had a few people contacted me and they were like, well, I spent $100 and I made 110 And I was like, no, you didn't. You made less than 100 because that 110 mm -hmm. doesn't take yeah, it. It goes some to Amazon, yeah. Amazon percentage. And I was like, you're mm -hmm. losing money. Uh, but yes, yeah, there is no promotion outside of Amazon. It's one of the so how much average, let's say, okay, you, you create books on certain niches on Amazon based on the keywords. Um, how much average each book sells and how much from your experience teaching some clients or students, like how many books they have done uh, yeah. to make, let's say, $10,000 income a month? Yeah, uh, I, I can tell you that you can get to $10,000 a month with around 40 books. So you just do the math. Uh, with if with, you, with yeah, what? For like, 40 books. For 40 zero. books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, again, this is something that you only do if you have the right instructions, the right course, the right tips. Uh, I remember back in the days, people having 200, 300 books, not even making $10,000. Why? Because they were doing the shotgun approach. They were basically publishing books all over the place without a direction. There isn't much science behind it. I mean, you just mm. try and see what works. That's marketing hoping. That's not online marketing. Uh, whereas having reverse engineer the algorithm, of course, I'm able to actually, you know, teach you the, the right method. If you follow it, 40, 50, sometimes 32 books. I had a student with 28, I believe, books making $15,000 last month. Now, December is a bit of an exception, but... Because of the season. How long is each book? Well, uh, 10,000 to 20,000. My favorite Words. length uh, used to be 12,000. Now it's increasing to about 18,000. But it's also true that if you have pictures in your book, uh, the, big, uh, the book is, uh, is, about, is going to be lengthy. Now, sometimes you can have shorter books and actually compete and rank better with them so long as you present them correctly. A lot of people say, well, my competitors have got 350 page books. And I'm like, mm. great, why don't, don't you compete with a short, you know, tips and tricks book, something mm. snappy that can be consumed quickly uh, of 30 pages? Because there can be value in 30 pages. But of course, if you try to sell the 30 page Bible, then there's something wrong. But you, there are ways around things. Based on this strategy of keywords and and searching and researching, does it matter the length? Like they can only on Kindle, they can read it from inside, and you get paid also for the how much they read. But yeah. what matters for your strategy is the keywords, the title, and yeah. so it doesn't matter if the book is ten pages, right? 
Uh, well, it does because then people leave you bad reviews, mm. and it it does matter in terms of a perceived value. Some people don't even look at it, by the way. And what you can avoid is it, what you want to avoid is that people buy your book and then they realize it's short and they leave you a bad review. Mm. Because a lot of people don't even look at how lengthy your book is, how long the book mm. is. And uh, but yes, the, the length is something that you have to, but you have to tackle it correctly. I mean, what's the right length? There is no right length. What's the mm. average length? I can tell you is around uh, ten thousand to twelve thousand words for self-published authors, and that's very mm. important, by the way, the distinction because there are authors and publishers. One problem with authors: authors will always lose against publishers for a very simple reason. Authors write what they like. If you have to write a book, what would you write? Something that you like, something that inspires you. But it doesn't matter. That doesn't mean other people are going to buy it. That mm. only means that it inspires you. See, the mindset is different. Whether I, whereas I produce books that they like, the market wants. So that's uh, by the you way. Usually, you dictate it, or you outsource it to an ex or a, like ghostwriter specialized yeah. in that niche, and he writes it for you. Ghostwriter. You outsource to ghostwriter. Yeah. And. Uh, Definitely after doing hundreds maybe of books, how many books you publish, self-published? Oh, well, uh, in May, I, I, I have around 50 books now. I, I haven't mm. published uh, as many. I can tell you there are some of my students that have three to 500 books, and some mm. of them had like 300 books, and then they came to me. and we, But just mm. by tweaking them, they literally, now they're earning five times what they were earning. It's not really the number of books because... If you go by the number of books, that simply means that you don't know what you're doing. You say, well, since it's many, with one or two or three, I will hit. Yes, right, but it's not a strategy. That's mm. the whole strategy. I don't teach so that. So you, you establish the team already, and you can use the teams or the ghostwriters that your students found. So why don't you keep the process going on? You have a guy who do the research for you, another ghostwriter, yeah. and another guy who puts the things on Amazon, on yeah. Kindle, and That's you can continue forever. Yeah, that's a question I get asked a lot, and it, it's a good question. I mean, I, I basically, it's not that I stop publishing. One thing about, about is that I, I'm always updated because I have mentorship with students, and so I have, I have to teach students, and students report back to me, and I have multiple experiences. Right now, I have mentored hundreds of students, actually, and I have a 100% success rate, uh, but the reality is that it, you know, there are only as many books that you can that you can produce. There are only as many keywords. But the biggest thing, and it's very important to get, is the price point. Why is Kindle publishing a cup business? Because fundamentally, books are cheap. Mm. You know? And and in answer to your question, you know, I can produce a course. I am launching a new one on how to become a highly paid consultant and charge more than $1,000 an hour without charging by the hour will be a great course. And with that, I can make $2 million Mm. instead of, you know, $3,000 more a month, which is great, but it's not $2 million, right? And sooner or later, you have to choose where to put your focus. Now, having an outsourced Kindle publishing business is great, uh, but it's work. It requires Mm. a team. And the earning potential is not that great. Now, again, if people watch this interview and they're earning zero, they're like, are you crazy? You can earn ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month. But when you compare that with other streams of income that I have, like high ticket affiliate marketing, yeah, information products, consulting, it, it, it's nothing. So When you publish the books on, on Kindle, do you start with 99% or free to launch it? What's the strategy? And then what's the price point that you set on like to keep the book. So when you when you well that's that's a private information by the way I'll reveal it. Uh, anyway, it's yeah when you launch it it's zero ninety nine, mm-hmm. and the book has to say zero ninety nine for uh, a maximum of five days. My my students are gonna kill me because they paid for the information. Anyway, maximum of five days, and then it has to go on free promotion for five days. Uh, actually, you set the price. Um, after it is a zero ninety nine for three to five days, you set the price back at two ninety nine before it goes on free promo. Because when the free promo expires, you know the price goes back to the price that it was. And after the free, free promo, you want the book to be at two ninety nine. What happens? But, but, is that, why, why you want to do the free promo? 
oh, the free promo is just to gather reviews. The free promo doesn't have pretty much any ranking purpose. A lot of people make a big deal out of, oh, my free book was downloaded a thousand times. It's not going to help your ranking. Um, you know, people brag about vanity metrics, units, or likes, shares on Facebook, you know, views and this kind of thing. But, you know, on Amazon, it's useless. So you do that for review purposes. So after a free promo, automatically it goes back to its, its X price, to previous price, which has to be 2 99 I cannot tell you how many times I had my book at 0 99 I put it for free, and then it went back to 0 99 Now, if it goes back to 0 99 after the free promo, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. It screws up the process. Amazon mm -hmm. doesn't like it. Amazon doesn't want you to sell for 0 99 And the price point for a Kindle book is 2 point Ninety-nine. Other price points just don't work if you do the self-publishing process. Now again, even if it's a book, a big book, yeah, uh, two two ninety-nine is the price. A box set you can you can sell it actually for three point ninety-nine or four ninety-nine or even five ninety-nine. Uh, but it's only for box sets. And if you have to create box sets again, you have to know there is a way to go about the process. If there is one thing that screws you over, is to think about it is single steps. Say, so what's the correct price? It, 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 it depends. Are you doing the right process? How many keywords do you have? Are you following uh, the, uh, well, I cannot mention it, but there is a, a, an approach that you have to follow for keywords. It goes you know, from one direction to the other. And Amazon wants you to saturate certain keywords first and then get into other keywords at a later date after you've done the work on the previous keywords. And that never changes, by the way. People ask me, what's changed, you know, in 2017 about Kindle Publishing? Nothing. Uh, mm. But, you know, look for the shiny objects, so they always try to, you know. And Find the new stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they try to change it. Say, oh, but, you know, I, I want to change it. It, it. You don't have to change it. One thing about Kindle Publishing is that it gets boring. That's the other thing. Uh, mm. It's really very simple. Once you have the method, th that is it. I've talked to, now I have students now, they want to get into different uh, businesses because the reality, sorry, I'm just taking my cable to charge the computer or why it's going to switch off. Okay, so the reality is that it's a, it's a boring business after a while. Also, in answer to your previous question, why don't you keep the process going? Sometimes I do publish books, but you know, it's boring. I cracked I crack it. I just, you know, the magic is gone. Mm. It's not, and if, you know, I used to like it a lot, actually, you know, discovering the keywords and the right covers, and there is a cover strategy you have to be cognizant of. It's great. Right now, it's like, if I see a new trend that I can monetize, I can jump on that and make a few thousand dollars. That's fine. It's Do you popular. focus on Amazon or you jump also to other platforms like iTunes or others? Oh, no. It, it, Just it, Amazon. Yeah, it's Amazon. The, the business is really on Amazon. Uh, I don't advise anybody to put books on other platforms. Uh, again, usually it's because people don't know how Amazon works. So they say, well, maybe I will have more luck on another platform. Uh, after you collect reviews, let's say after the free promotion, how many reviews you need to really mega launch it? And, and do you do, do any big launch after that? Or what, what do you do no, after no, that? No, there's no launch. There's no book launch. No uh, book and, launch. Uh, Just no, depending on the keywords, you're going to no. sell the book. Exactly, because if you're a nobody, again, it's very important to draw this distinction. Now, uh, if you are Russell Branson, you can make a book launch and then have back-end sales because you got, you know, the, the software. If you're a nobody, there is no launch. Mm -hmm. There's no launch that you can that you can do, especially with a book. This, the scope of earning is very limited. Uh, and one, you, you suggest it, you do it under a pen name or under, under the name? Under pen name, of... yeah. Again, it's very important to, to explain mm -hmm. this. One thing is being somebody that also publishes, publishes books or also to use book to leverage your reputation. Fine, but it's not Kindle publishing. So a lot of people get confused. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a lot of you know, people that don't really understand what I say or you know, competitors or haters, they say, oh, everybody knows that a book is, is great for your reputation even if you don't earn any money. Fine, that's absolutely, but that's not what we're talking about. Right. But the, the people who have a brand, a little bit of a personal brand or have published a book, they also can research in around their area to find something that might this method work for and, and, and write a book about it, right? No. Why? No. No. Uh, because basically, let's suppose you write a book. So uh, if, if, you, if, you, if you were to write a book, 
what would you write your book about? Give me an example. Let's say ex people write about what they know, about their experiences. So let's yeah. say I am an expert in entrepreneurship, right? It's a very broad subject, right? Yeah. So my passion is entrepreneurship. But the keyword says that you need to write a book about uh, sales of, you know, small companies, yeah. right? So you write a book. You can do, if you are a good writer and you know how to research the book and write it or outsource it, you can write a book about something you are passionate about. Yeah. Uh, but also your process is about outsourcing. So it doesn't matter if you know about it or you don't know about it because you're going to outsource it to the expert who knows about it. Yeah, but like, yeah, it's important. I mean, if you, if you find out that people want that, then it matters whether you're good or interested about mm -hmm. it. But the fact that you are doesn't mean anything if people don't want it. That's one of the main mistakes that authors make. Oh, you know, I like it. I enjoy writing books. Okay, nobody cares, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I enjoy, you know, I have all sorts of crazy passions. People don't care. I cannot monetize them. Uh, so that is very important because, again, if you don't, if you're starting from self-publishing and you're reversing engineer the process, okay, so you start from the keywords and you look for what people already like, you base books around them. That's very different from becoming a guru in the self-help niche, for example, mm -hmm. and also write a book. That, that is fine, but look for even famous people that self-publish their books. Uh, Pat Flynn, very famous, mm -hmm. didn't earn a lot of money. My students make much more than that, and nobody knows mm -hmm. them. So yeah, they use it usually as a business card to sell other products, or they, they use it as to, you know, to collect emails. Yeah. And uh, yeah, they try to sell other products on on the back of it. Yeah, but but then you have to have those products. Yeah. And, and you see, there is no guarantee that the, the topic you're publishing books on has products, or it can be monetized to a great extent. So mm. what I always say is that if you do self-publishing, that is a business per se. It doesn't have any application for other businesses. It could have, but you don't have to ban from it. Again, mm. the other thing is different. If you open a blog, you become famous, etc., and and then you try to monetize. Which, by the way, it's an approach I really don't like. I, be, I believe it's fallacious. It always starts with the market research. Uh, mm. A lot of people try to open a blog that start posting, and I'm like, what about if you discover nobody nobody cares? So, but if you start from products and keywords that people are already looking for, you base your business around them. Mm -hmm. uh, but for Kindle publishing, is uh, is something different. Again building a brand around Kindle publishing, I believe is just useless. Uh, because what, at the end of the day, you're selling books. Now again, if you want to become the next Ty Lopez, it didn't start from a book. Why? Because you can do much more profitable things. Now you can become Ty Lopez and then sell a book. But why would you ever do that? Right? So it, it really, it, it's really helpful in terms of strategy. Decide what you want to do. Because if you have an income goal or if you have a brand goal, some people can do it for ego. Mm. Right. So, so for newbies who want to make from one thousand dollar to ten thousand dollars, you are an expert in self-publishing, Kindle, uh, affiliate marketing, digital products. Yeah. What do you advise them? Where they should start? Yeah. Which well, area they should pick online? Yeah. Well, that depends. If you want to make from a thousand to ten thousand dollars. Uh, the two easiest things I believe is high ticket affiliate marketing and Kindle publishing. Uh, but then if you want to grow beyond it, for example, with Kindle publishing, you can't, uh, which is the, the main problem. You, you will not scale up a self publishing business to 50 grand. If you do, you have to branch out to personal branding, which requires again, a completely different set of skills. Uh, people sometimes, you know, they give me names, you know, like Steve Scott. It's not self-publishing. It's mm -hmm. personal branding to sell books. Uh, whereas affiliate, high ticket affiliate marketing, you can get to a million dollar a month. Uh, I'm not saying that it's easy, but it's doable uh, by doing the same thing. Uh, with Kindle publishing, again, after a while, it's a pen name. Uh, you're reverse engineering demand on, on books and fundamentally you're selling books. Uh, what are you going to do? Build a, a brand based on a pen name which doesn't exist and hoping that the topic you're basing your books on also has products. It's a lousy way. Uh, another way, which is, which is the way I did actually, is that um, you create a YouTube channel or blog or something and you start to create products around something that people want. 
But again, that doesn't start with you, it starts with them. So it starts with Google keyword tool and looking for keywords that are searched for. You have to make sure compet competition is already there. One mistake is people say, oh, there is no competition, great. There's it, no market, yeah. It's no mar usually there's no market. If there's no competition, mm -hmm. there is no market. So uh, it starts with, and then you build the business around that. Even affiliate marketing. Uh, some people, you know, they start a blog or a YouTube channel and they talk about something usually that they like and then they, well, I'll try to see whether there are affiliate products to promote. What? Mm. No. You have to start to see the demand in the market, check whether there are a bunch of products you can promote and then you base your YouTube channel and your blog around them because a blog is not a blog and a YouTube channel is not a YouTube channel. There are sales tools. How do you pick the right niche online? Like, how do you research that and pick the right niche yeah. uh, to also start building a brand, let's say? Yeah, competition. There has to be competition. Mm. Uh, brand positioning is competition oriented. It was invented and theorized by all the and Jack Trout. So back in the days, it was all about customer service and client oriented business. We are client or we are customer oriented. How many times have you heard of? Doesn't work anymore because clients take it for granted. Uh, right now, you're only allowed to earn money in relation to your competitors. So mm. you don't just jump in and do things. That's the amateur way. Uh, you look for what's there and you look for what's already selling and you create a variation of that which solves a problem that your competitors don't solve. And the way you present your product and the, is that you say, well, my competitors are great, but they only do X. If you're looking for Y, my product is better. And you create many times a complementary product. You don't create a product, a new product, if you don't want to be you know, beheaded because it's not the right you know, way to do things. Uh, usually, you know, don't be a pioneer. Pioneers get crushed. Uh, they just get smashed, you know. It's, it's not just the right way. And mm. so you create a variation of something that is already working and uh, and you sell it. And also you leverage on your competitor. And actually, if you're clever, you can create something that is complementary and all of your co competitors will sell it because mm. it's useful for them. Uh, some people try to copy my courses. I'm like, that's dumb because you won't win, you know. But if you create something that is complementary to mine, I may as well email my list, you know, twice a week to say, well, listen, with an affiliate link, of course, there is this huge course. It's much better. Mm. Right? So it, it starts with, a, first of all, competition has to be there. Second, you have to be, make sure that this competition actually sells stuff. Because there is competition in unprofitable niches as well. Everybody jumps in for something, there is no money. Makes no sense to me. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, we see most of the internet marketers they copy their courses like they have a course on webinars another course on how to make digital products another course on how to make you know videos and 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 on and on but what separate the people who succeed and from people who fails is the branding and the marketing and the systems that they build around yeah, their product yeah 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 and, and one thing about the branding uh, is that it is create a lot of people try to create a brand and then sell products. I don't believe that's the the most profitable approach. Although I have to say that for some people it works. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, there are things to be said about certain people. Uh, people popping out and after a year they have millions of subscribers on YouTube. Nobody knew them and now they're rock stars. Mm -hmm. There could be things going on behind the scene or a lot of uses. Uh, well, I don't want to get into that, but there are usually people behind these people, okay? Um, you know, even the Ty Lopez or the, you know, uh, Logan Paul or whatever, you know, after a year, they have 15 million subscribers. Mm, you know, how do they do it? Providing value, everybody's doing it. Keywords, everybody's doing it. There is some more push. Mm. Uh, but Many of them are spending lots of money over the, on advertisements and they have they already have money to build yeah. the brand, but they yeah. are doing the work. Like example, if you look at uh, Grant uh, Cardone, he right. is really working hard, shooting lots of videos, but there yeah. is a huge team behind him. Oh, yeah, you look yeah, at yeah. Patrick, the same thing. Yeah. That guy was a, was a uh, Grant Cardone. I'm going to Grant Cardone, by the way, meet him in, in, in uh, February in Las Vegas. Mm. Um, he's a great guy, but he was already pretty much, he is almost a billionaire, right? Uh, about Ty Lopez and other people. I'm not talking about, about that. They're great. They're great entrepreneurs, but what I'm getting at is that if you have people behind you, you can afford create yes. a YouTube channel for six months without selling anything and then just exponentially sell 
everything because now mm-hmm. you're you're famous. But normal people, you know, like like you cannot me, afford it. Yeah, you cannot afford to build a brand and then sell stuff. Because what about if you build a brand around something people don't want? Again, mm. people like Ty Lopez, of course, there is a business strategy behind it. It will always work because there is a team. Uh, mm. This is like books like Harry Potter. It wasn't an accident that it was a hit. It was strategically engineered. But it doesn't mean that if you write something about fantasy, it will work, is what they always tell people. That That's an exception. So the brand is actually reversely built from selling products because you cannot build a strong brand if you don't sell products your brand is built uh, around nothing Correct. and ultimately you cannot make money if you don't sell so it's usually slow because of course nobody knows you sell products you you package them well and then they provide value and people start talking about you they give you lip service and then the brand is built but if you build something it was a huge mistake in italy mm-hmm. an online marketer did it Providing value, free videos on YouTube, sponsor ads on videos that didn't sell anything. Great community. People expect a video every day. Mm. He started to sell. People immediately shut him off. And I was like, well, what's this selling now? Because he had built a community of freebie seekers, providing a lot mm. of value, by the way. I'm not saying that it wasn't. Mm. But you've got to build something to sell things. And, and again, if you don't have any, anybody behind you that fills you with millions, uh, you cannot afford to do vlogs or blogs or whatever for six months, a year, two years, three years without earning any money. As one of my mentors, Dan Kennedy, says, you had to sell something yesterday, especially if you're starting from little money. That's my, that's my, that's what my, I teach my students that are they're all doing quite well. How do you collect leads? What's your strategies? What's the platforms that you use to collect leads um, or the funnels structure? Yeah. So, so my structure is actually quite, uh, not that much funnel oriented because I do educational marketing videos on YouTube and people pretty much buy directly. Uh, I devise all the rules of online marketing, uh, high prices, direct linking and everything. I actually like to collect pop-up uh, emails on my landing pages. Okay, So people that try to leave the page, they get their emails collected. Um, I do have funnels uh, with Facebook. I am increasing my monetization plan for Facebook ads in 2018. Uh, but I mostly go the organic ways. Again, it depends what you want to do. The first platform I will heavily monetize and it will give me great satisfaction is YouTube. Uh, and in YouTube, leads are cheaper. But then again, there are certain businesses you cannot monetize on YouTube and you cannot monetize on Facebook. For example, every business concern with erotica. It's very hard to you know produce erotic kind of videos on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know you have to go the other way. And we are now getting into a situation in which you can lead generate with paid traffic, uh, but people want to see organic videos because back in the days you could lead generate or you could acquire traffic solo ads. Nobody knew about you. Nobody knew about who Frank Kern was before Frank Kern was Frank Kern. He was already rich right now. If only the only thing that you are is a sponsor ad on Facebook and that goes away, nobody finds you. If I look for information about you, I want to find videos, I want to find articles, I want to find blogs. So, yes. Uh, so anyway, do, the people do research before they buy? Oh, uh, well, yeah. I mean, most of them, very few people are impulse buyers like me. If I want to buy something, I just buy it. I usually don't even ask for a discount. Uh, but, you know, if people are such big look at, they find great testimonials and they find 600 YouTube videos and everything. Uh, but if I do a lead generation Facebook ad, and I promise the word, and I, you take my name and you Google it, and there is nothing. You're like, mm. and this guy, the biggest guy in the world. See that? What, what's the average lead cost, let's say, for the U.S. market? And do you focus on the U.S. or English-speaking countries? Or yeah, it's usually the U.S. I do have clients. Well, eighty percent of my clients, seventy percent of my clients are from the U.S., and the rest of them are from English-speaking countries, and five percent of them are from you know non-English-speaking countries, but they do speak English. I I only do things in English. Well, the average cost per lead is about is about six dollar really in the American market. It does depend on the niche, but it's usually around six bucks. How do you? You are an Italian. Uh, did you have this dilemma between like producing content in, in Italian versus English, or you see more the market is in English because? Yeah. Because I have this between Arabic and English. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually quite funny hmm. because. 
the, the level of online marketing in Italy is so low, it's ridiculous. So sometimes I produce video in my private Facebook profile in Italian. And so I became a guru in my own right in Italy. But the way I'm positioning myself is that I am coming from above. So I am already above everybody else because, first of all, I am the, the Italian person that is an American guru. So, you know, the reputation is already built. Second, and the penetration for the market is easier, but the conversion, what matters? Yeah, yeah, Like you yeah. get more views, but it doesn't mean you're going to convert more. Yeah, I know. Then that's essential to say. So as I was saying, the level is very low. The earnings of these gurus is, is pathetic. So, of course, and, and some people ask me for courses. So they ask me, can you produce courses? And I'm like, well, there, there are differences to be said. For example, in Italy, there are, affiliate marketing is very hard because there aren't products to promote. So if I teach you affiliate marketing, then you cannot go ahead and do it because very few products can be promoted Italian. as an affiliate. What's the point? You get it. They want yeah. a course, but they don't get it. They're like, yes, but if you become an affiliate, you need <laughs> products that give you the affiliation. The market is not there, yeah. It's and but you know I could I, I am sure I'm leaving money on the table but no right now I'm, I'm carrying on with my English speaking uh, of course and the Italian Italians are, are so bad they always they're afraid of the scam <laughs> everything is a scam for Italians everything it's mm -hmm. pathetic uh, but the Italian market can be profitable I mean I, I just helped a friend of mine launching a business and she uh, that's her third month of business actually well actually she started it's Sec two and a half months she's been in business and she is already netting uh, over twelve thousand dollars, twelve thousand euros, which is close mm. to fifteen thousand wow. dollars. Less than three three months of business. That's what happens when you you know what you're doing. And she uses Facebook, for example. I advise her to use uh, YouTube for organic videos and Facebook for lead generation. And you receive organic sales from YouTube and paid. Uh, for email marketing but for Facebook ads back to it when you advertise you lead them to capture email first and then through the emails you try to sell them or you lead them to directly to the sales page or if, it, if you are selling let's say one-on-one -on -one, you lead them directly to a call or how what is your process well I I do what well, it depends if I do lead generation of course you lead them to an opt-in page. If you don't, if you don't do this, and now you can do uh, Facebook Messenger with the bot, and then the opt-in. Uh, you want to collect the email at the very least, but you also want now maybe to connect them on social media, uh, and then you try to sell them, and you you you, you uh, send them content. Uh, I do direct sales on YouTube. For example, I have a very small YouTube channel relatively to other people, but I make much more money uh, because of the way it is done. Uh, people say don't drive traffic off YouTube. Mm, I disagree. Because the money that you can make by driving traffic people off YouTube is greater than the money you can make uh, many times by, by keeping people on YouTube. And I don't earn anything from YouTube ads. I earn like 70 bucks. I'm not a YouTuber. I sell on YouTube, which is much different. Of course, if you sell for thousands of dollars, you're going to make a lot of money. And uh, yes. So, so the, the landing pages, do you... you which one is working more, like videos or text, or what's working more now? For lead generation? Yeah, for landing pages, lead generation, well, sales pages. Landing pages. Landing pages, of course, video. You want to have a video on your sales page. Now, for Facebook, uh, Nicholas Kuzmich says that images uh, win over videos. So if you have a lead generation of Facebook ad, and if you have a everything correct, you you have a video, the video, you know, will perform worse than the picture. That's what Nicholas Kuzmich says. Nicholas Kuzmich runs ads for Anthony Robbins. But also videos are very profitable. I mean, I'm not saying... He says that the best thing many times is a picture, uh, but I have used videos as well. Uh, there are pros and cons. Which tool do you use for landing pages? ClickFunnels or lead pages or another? Well, I, use, I, I now use ClickFunnels. How do you compare it to lead pages? Well, ClickFunnels is a bit more complicated. It is certainly graphically better. Uh, there are certain things I cannot stand about ClickFunnels. ClickFunnels is good for funnels. It's not good for membership platforms. It's not. It, it's good for funnels. Uh, compared to lead pages, I believe it's more customizable, so you can change more things. Uh, I, I do have both. By the way, I believe. So you still use land, uh, lead pages? Yeah, essential tools. I mean, 
I so what's the difference? Just like to organize the funnel, they divide it for you, you know, the thank you pages and the, those yeah. five or four that's steps. That's the only page. edge or? Yeah, the, the main difference is that lead pages is not like lead funnels. Lead pages is for landing pages. Mm -hmm. It's for squeeze pages, <laughs> squeeze pages, opt-in pages. It's to collect the email address of people. Click funnels is for funnels. So is what happens after you've collected the email. And one, one thing I want to say to everybody is that you have to have different tools and the best tool for its use. A lot of people try to use ClickFunnels for something that ClickFunnels doesn't do well because they try to save money. So they say, well, I will just use one tool for everything and they feel smart about it. Mm. Yeah. For membership, you use Kajabi, right? Kajabi, yeah. ClickFunnels sucks for, mm. for membership platform. I, I, it's, it's amazing how many people use that. You can't even add users directly. Uh, for video courses, which is a strong area of expertise of mine, I produce so many courses uh, and I've made millions by selling courses and I've made so many mistakes. It's amazing. I've tried so many things. Uh, video courses are very profitable, but, you know, they come with so many problems that nobody, by the way, nobody talks about these problems. Nobody. Like what? Uh, affiliate fraud. Do you know what affiliate fraud is? Okay. People stealing credit cards and buying your course through their own affiliate link. So the platform pays them, like ClickBank, that's very strong on ClickBank, mm -hmm. and you're in debt with, with ClickBank. And when the bank charges the money back, it charges ClickBank, but ClickBank has already paid the affiliate, and you're in trouble. Uh, I was $7,000 uh, $7, in debt with ClickBank, because you know they charged their transactions back, where a lot of people stealing credit cards and buy my course. Of course, it wasn't my fault ClickBank you know, admitted mm -hmm. it. But do you put the digital courses on ClickFunnels as well, on uh, ClickBank? I used to, I used to. Now used you to. just try to sell it by your own. Yeah, I sell I sell it my own, I have my affiliates. You mm -hmm. have to be careful with affiliates. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of problems, a lot of hazards. Do, do, do you use any program like Teachable or other programs to do the, to host the digital uh, course or? No, I just upload videos on live email. And, and then I, uh, of course, I have a person that does that. Uh, they create, it creates membership platforms for me. Oh, on your WordPress site? Yeah, with Kajabi right now. With Kajabi. Kajabi, okay. And yeah. the best way that's working to sell, convert on your courses is uh, through, let's say, webinars or the Jeff Walker method to launch or just YouTube? Yeah. Well, what's it, working for you? Well, for me, neither of them. Is I don't do it. Uh, I educate people on YouTube. And with YouTube, you can have 600 webinars always running. Right? Because if you sell at every video, I mean, a webinar is a place, is a video basically, in which you provide value and then you sell. But you can do the same on YouTube. Right? And that's what I do. I provide a ton of value on YouTube. It's so actually for the amount of value I provide, I, I should have more reach. Everybody says that. We're working on it, by the way. Uh, but. I provide value, I teach people, and then I say, if you want to find out more, buy my courses. But that works for me because I'm a great sales guy and I'm very confident in videos. Now, if you're not, first of all, you should learn it. But of course, you, you have to try a more impersonal approach, uh, which could be lead generation or webinars in which you're not directly facing the camera. Uh, but, but you already now can afford it, let's say. Why you didn't build a funnel around... Uh, webinars and then you drive traffic to it yeah. through Facebook ads to convert well, yeah. more doing it first of all but uh, a few of my courses are very very well you, you driving traffic to it is problematic especially with one but the Kindle publishing course driving traffic to it it's not the easiest thing to do because of the nature of the course mm. uh, because it's a very very small and targeted niche mm. and those people are, by the nature of the business, not on Facebook. Uh, so I, I am not trying to do that with, with YouTube. Uh, maybe I'll do, maybe I, I won't, even because I want to kind of actually get out uh, from the Kindle mm. uh, business. Uh, I make a lot of money by selling that course, uh, but the environment is not really that great. Mm. Uh, so being associated with it is not really it's not really good. But so you're yeah, moving towards affiliate marketing more. Well, information products. I mean, my my the, the thing I am exceptional at is, you know, is taking money from people. 
you know, uh, that, that's just the reality of it. So uh, by selling value and everything, selling information. So if you want to sell video course, if you want to create a business that sells information and you want to make a lot of money, I'm your guy. Uh, for Kindle Publishing, you know, I don't want to be, it's easy. It's, it's, yeah. hey, it's not challenging. No, you know? We, we spoke about digital products and, and Kindle. Let's speak a little bit about uh, affiliate marketing, like yeah. how to make four to six, six di digits uh, in 2018, let's say, through affiliate yeah. marketing. Yeah, so let's suppose you want to make $100,000 a year. All right, mm -hmm. that's eminently doable. Uh, first of all, you, you need to sell for high tickets. That's one thing I am absolutely strong about. You got to sell for high tickets. Uh, so you have to be able to make commissions of at least 100 to 200 bucks. Uh, because the reality is that you will not make $10,000 each and every month by selling $30 products. You just won. Nobody does. And nobody tells you that. I thought everybody was getting rich by selling $30 products. They're not. I can mm -hmm. tell you categorically. Uh, I cannot do it. Nobody can do it because the mathematics sucks. If, if the math is wrong, you cannot fix it with good marketing. Where to find those high ticket products? Well, that's the thing. I recently became a licensee for a company. It's a high ticket. This company sells coaching and products and, and events for small to medium businesses uh, about affiliate marketing, email marketing, lead generation, branding, uh, investing, uh, how to invest in precious metals. I mean, everything concerned with uh, a company, even direct mail, I mean, with educating people on this. And I became a licensee and I can make commissions as high as $25,000. Now, it doesn't take a genius to understand that if I can make $25,000 in one time, you know, I only have to sell one product a month to make 25K a month, which is very decent. And uh, you still sell that. It's a difficult sell. You still sell that through YouTube, talking about something related to this product? Yeah, yeah because the reality is that people want to spend money. People love it. I mean, that's the old story. Nobody's got money, but everybody queue for 10 hours outside of an Apple store to buy the most expensive iPhone ever, which, by the way, I haven't got. I still have the 6 uh, as, as a form of protest. It, it, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, they just like time, you know, time. People are busy, but everybody watches The Big Brother or Temptation Island or whatever. So the reality is that people enjoy spending money. And how dare you not propositioning them with a product that they can spend more money on? It's a choice at the end of the day. And the reality is that it doesn't take much more effort to sell a high ticket product. So to go back to your question, if you want to make a lot of money, find something that you can make $10,000, you know, once a month. And uh, if they contact me, I can show them the way. But that is a problem. I recognize, you know, there are a lot of cheap products that you can promote, but you will not earn a lot of money in that. Okay. How to make money making videos? You have one of the courses talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, and another one is coming, which will be much, much more in depth because again, I produce a lot of courses, so I have a lot of experience. I will launch a new course on how to create a course. Uh, first of all, you have to say that uh, you know, creating. I mean, when you say videos, you mean a video course, right? Uh, your course is about, I think, teaching videos to make money, or like I don't know, video courses. It's not yeah. digital products; it's just videos. It's it's on how to create a video course. So. If you want to create a video course, first of all, you shoot. Uh, I believe it's the best business in the world if you are willing to create something. Because do, you, do you shoot the videos yourself or you you like the presentation? Uh, yeah. You have a presentation and you go through the presentation and record your voice. Which one yeah. you use? You can do, you can do both. Mm. Uh, uh, and you can do both in the same course, actually. It depends. Mm. Which one works the best? It depends. If mm -hmm. it's a step-by-step -step process, of course, you want to be showing your over-the-shoulder, you know, your computer screencast. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a whiteboard kind of environment, then I got a whiteboard, you know, uh, behind me, I use my whiteboard. And it depends if it is more theoretical. Uh, the new course I'm launching, for example, it will be a whiteboard kind of video because mm -hmm. there's a lot of mindset involved. There is a lot of strategies that are not step-by-step -step in terms of click here, click there, but there are more conceptual, you gotta see the picture, you gotta see the funnel, you gotta see the process. So I have to draw a lot of things and there will be me and my whiteboard. Uh, what's the optimal or the best number of modules in a course? 
And the next question is what's two questions. The next question is what's the best price point to sell a course? Yeah, okay, so the number of modules, it depends how, how however many you need to make to make the point, to make your point. I mean to teach whatever it is that you're teaching. Now of course you can sell them for upsells, I'm not even talking about that. But there is not my courses tend to be quite long compared to the majority of other marketers. So for me, I will teach for hours and I have usually 40, 50, 60 lessons uh, and maybe five to eight modules. Uh, there is no magic number, it, whatever works for you. People like to see anyway a long course, mm -hmm. uh, which is very organized actually. Uh, you can have, because one thing is that people get overwhelmed. So you want to have a progression bar, for example, people love it. You know, you have completed 15%, then you have completed 20%, people love it. Uh, but you don't want to leave people with the impression that it's short. Now, the length doesn't have a damn thing to do with the quality of the information, by the way. But people don't care because people don't buy your course for the reasons you think they are buying the course. They want to see a lot of lessons. They want to see a lot of stuff. They don't care whether it works or not. They have people contacting me and say, oh, Big Luca, you haven't updated this course in three months. And I was like, yeah, why, why would I ever update? Oh, I want new lessons. Say, but nothing new has come out. Mm. Oh, but I want a new lesson. It's like, have you done the work on the old lessons? That's it. Oh, then I just watched them. <laughs> and they want to watch a new lesson. Mm. And they believe that a new lesson will contain the new magic trick. So it just doesn't work. Uh, for price point, uh, I believe you should sell for the minimum price is two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. Uh, you have to find a way to receive two ninety nine, five ninety nine, or you go higher nine ninety nine. I I now sell well. I also sell things for thirty thousand so. dollars. Okay. But for me, is yeah, three uh, two ninety nine, three ninety nine, four ninety seven. Uh, 597, 687. You know, there are different price points that people mm. receive. Different. And the, the structure of this front end for the prices, how would you do that in your funnel? Like you start small with a small no. price or you start big or how you start? Yeah. How Big Luca starts? Big Luca, well, Big Luca starts and ends in the same page like big boys do. Now, there used to be a trend which was front end off, tripwire offer, auto, auto, auto. Okay, mm -hmm. so three forty nine dollars and a hundred and nineteen one time mm -hmm. offer, you know, with a sales page saying, well, wait, I have a special offer for you. And then one click upsells and then second auto for two hundred and then usually a high ticket offer of mentorship. Now what this does is that first of all people get pissed off. Second of all, you get the majority of your money coming from the third auto, which is high ticket consulting, and only the small portion coming from passive income, because you know and, uh, and it's, it's, it's not that effective to segment the list because you have three different people because people buy for $49 are completely different people than people buying the upsell. So you have to create three lists and you know it becomes a pain. Now what the tendency of today is actually to have one product for $9.97 for example. And so you create a buyer's list in reverse from people buying it. And, and if anything you do upsells and cross-sells uh, via email list, but talking about you know the process is opt-in webinar with big product. That's it. Then on the back end, you're sold on usually continuity program because you stack people upon each other. To membership, you put, you drive them later on, after mm. like through the course or through the nine thousand nine hundred dollar. Like if they buy a thousand dollars worth of your product through a seminar, it's quite easy to sell them mentorship. Okay, but. There is no this, this complicated sales well, What's your process to sell your one-on-one -on -one coaching? You drive them into a strategy call and then you try to convert them or you yeah. send them to a sales page? Yeah, they usually find me actually through YouTube and they, they apply. I have an application process. Right now, I, I want to drive uh, some paid traffic to my application and uh, they have to apply and then my team reviews that and if we are compatible, uh, we may talk on the phone. I usually don't advise people to do this uh, if they don't know what they're doing because then you end up talking on the phone every day with non-qualified people. But I am incredibly good at qualifying people. So, uh, of course, if I have to waste the time... Is it of, through the 
questions that they answer or the forms you qualify them or uh, what's the process? In my upcoming course, first of all, you have to make sure your requirements uh, for your, your clients. I mean, if you're not making or if you don't want to make a certain amount of money, it's useless to consult with me. Uh, if you are a woo-woo person that thinks that just by opening your heart to the universe, money will come, I'm not your guy. It's useless to work together. You see, I won't take your money. But it's very important to say because some people want mm. a warm and fuzzy personality, and I'm not one. Uh, because I am no BA, I, I don't care about anything else but the bottom line about money. You know that that my main area of expertise. Mm. Which I, most most internet marketers don't really uh, talk. I mean, don't deliver that to your, to their clients. Which is yeah. the most important things to monetize to convert. To monetize to convert exactly. Mm. So I know how to do this. I mean, if I go to the gym, I expect my personal trainer to kick my ass. That's it. Mm. But some people don't want so requirements. The other thing is rules. You gotta explain them the rules because what happens with consulting is that he becomes babysitting. People don't want a consultant. Again, people hire, try to hire me, and, and then they want mommy. They want a babysitter. They want a womb. You mm -hmm. know, they, they want they they want to write to me every day and they expect immediate response. And I'm like, dude, that's not. Are you crazy? No, that's mm -hmm. not consulting anymore. That's babysitting. You want direct access to me? We're talking about a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, every three months, man. I cannot chat with you because if I have 10 clients and you ask me 10 questions a day, then I have 100 questions to answer every day. I don't have a life anymore. Mm -hmm. So they have to agree that, yes, I understand. I can only send you one email per week, which, by the way, works better. And mm -hmm. if I need some extra, I need to contact you and pay you. And you, I may not be available. I, have, I, I turn down pretty much 90% of the applications I receive. It's amazing. I had people, they have applications they haven't even replied to. Um, uh, some of them because they're stupid, so my team tells me, look, at they're stupid. Uh, some of them I personally look at and, and I'm like, I'm busy. So, you know, I just I just don't. I just don't do it. But uh, that's, that's the thing we consult. It's, uh, so it's how, how you, through the forms, you qualify them and do you bucket them? Do you send them into different seven, buckets? Right? I, I actually don't. I, I reply to them. Uh, I explain to them the rules, the uh, the agreement. They usually sign an NDA, and I explain to them the price. I maybe have different packages, and I, I tell them where to pay. They pay me, and you know, then we get on Skype. Do you have a fixed uh, landing pages or sales pages for the prices, or you customize it, tailor made it, usually based on the conversation with the client? Oh, yeah. I tailor made them, of mm. course. And that's essential because, you know, I cannot, you cannot charge different people the same price. That, that's a misnomer to me. If you, you know, if, first of all, if you want to talk to me on Skype, for example, uh, to see whether we are compatible or not, let's suppose you need a strategic session, you want to talk with me, you want to work with me, you don't know, let's do, okay, it's a thousand dollars, first of mm. all. Okay. So we'll talk and then you explain to me what the problem is and then I'll give you tailor-made things, even because... It may require certain hours, and I cannot drop below a certain numbers. Okay, which many times is two to three thousand dollars an hour. So you know we have to decide what to do. It depends what you need, how long you need it for. Uh, mm -hmm. If you tell me that you want to make a certain kind of money per month and you don't like the camera, the solution for you is going to be completely different than if you tell me that you like to sell and you want to become an Instagram celebrity, or if you want to, you know. That's different if you speak English or not. You have Italian speaking English, and so one thing gets easier, and the other get you know it's not. Uh, it all depends on what you want to do. I have people say, "Well, Luca, I want to launch a video course or consulting business." And launching a consulting business is quicker than launching a physical product business, for example. So, mm. uh, but if one is more profitable than the others, then I want more money. Which one is easier to sell, the consulting one-on-one -on -one business or the digital courses? Well, I believe the digital course is easier because consulting, we talk about, you know, thousands upon, upon thousands of dollars. And also, uh, well, consulting by definition is a cut business. Uh, you cannot go beyond a certain number. And actually, the course I'll be releasing is for people that really want to maximize this, but let's face it, I mean, I have to be present. Uh, I actually prefer to sell video courses and it's easier. Uh, but then it's also true that you make as much money by selling a few units of your time. So, How long it takes you usually to develop your uh, digital courses? 
Right, that's, that's a good question. Uh, it, it all depends. I mean, it, it comes down to how quickly you can film your videos. Uh, and, and don't think about anything else until you have your folder with videos inside, mm -hmm. until you have content ready. Then the back end and the Kajabi, you can hire somebody like I do. So you don't like to sell it before it's ready. You make it all ready, finished, then you start selling. No, I mean, well, it's very dangerous to do it. Uh, getting the money before you do something is great entrepreneurship wise. Uh, but I don't know. It's like, I'll give you an example with consulting. One problem that you face is that people pay me upfront hundred percent. And then mm -hmm. it feels like I'm working for free mm -hmm. because like you send me the money, I got the money, I withdraw the money. And then I have to speak with you for four sessions. And I'm like, it's not paying me, but he has already paid me. So, you know, there is that. Uh, but yes, getting the money first is entrepreneurship wise is part. I personally don't do it. I announce it. So when I release it, I have people buying it after two seconds. All right. What's Luca Academy? The Big Luca Academy. Yeah. The Big Luca Academy is my centralized premier place in which I put all of my courses. And when people become members, uh, they have access to all the courses and future courses. So I have all of my all my digital courses on there. It's it's a very great place if you're interested in online marketing strategies and actually, you know, straight up monetization. What's your daily work and life routine from the time you wake up until you sleep? Yeah, I don't really have a routine. I mm -hmm. want to get on one for 2018. Uh, following rules is not really. Well, I've always had problems with this. I am a very disciplined, by the way. So if I if I have to do something, uh, I will do it. Uh, one thing is that working from home, especially now here in Dubai, from the penthouse, doesn't really help because I have a heated pool to go to. I have a 24 hours restaurant. Mm. I live on the 41st floor, overlooking the Burj Khalifa. So you know. A lot of temptation. So I, I really have to learn how to, for example, now you're interviewing me, my phone is switched off and it's looking down. I shouldn't even have it on my desk. Uh, waking up early in the morning is something I would like to do. I don't. Today I woke up at 2 p.m. Uh, but I don't have a usual, a usual day. Uh, I don't know whether, that, that's pretty uncommon, but that's, that's possible to do it. Even though my business is getting more serious and so I do need to to have a routine right now. I don't really know which one it is. Uh, but what's, it's your, it's, what's your other hobbies? Hobbies? Well, I, I go to the gym. I go to the gym and uh, I used to be, well, again, I used to be a bouncer. So anything related to security, I kind of like it. I'm trying to, I'm not as hardcore as I used to be with self-defense and everything. Uh, I used to study Krav Maga, which is an Israeli uh, self-defense method is taught to special forces saves my ass multiple times right now you know i'm a quite i kind of chilled out dude uh, i'm not a violent person anymore I mean, it's not that I, i've ever been i always was I, I i never was but you know uh with that kind of job i i i was kind of violent sometimes so right now chilling out what's the number one marketing strategy that worked for you just one videos videos educational videos on YouTube that's great if you if you don't know how to sell on videos and if you're not good in front of a camera I do believe you'll have a big problem in the years to come I may be wrong by the way uh, but I do believe you're gonna have a huge huge problem your, your, your top three mentors Dan Ke Bob Proctor Dan Kennedy and Robert Kiyosaki now, Bob Proctor for mindset, all around and how to reprogram your mind. Robert Kiyosaki for financial education and where to put your money and the cash flow and everything. And Dan Kennedy for marketing, for real marketing. So. Top three apps that you use on your phone? Probably Spotify. Uh, yes, probably Facebook, Spotify, and my Gmail app. What's the best advice that you have ever received? The best advice I've ever seen was like, I, I, I don't remember receiving that many good advice actually, 
I don't know. I don't have one in my mind. I believe the best advice I'd, I would have liked to receive was like, yeah, I mean, just just, just do what, listen to, to your inner call, but do the freaking work. And Top three books. Yeah, thinking, grow rich, rich dad, poor dad. And, well, at the first, there are a bunch of it. There is... There is like psycho cybernetics or the power. No, well, the power of positive thinking. I don't really. It depends. There are plenty of them. There is also power, which is a book I have right here that teaches you the laws of power, which are incredibly useful for business and, and consulting for that matter. Um, yeah, the cash flow quadrant, maybe. Very good book. Last question: How people can contact you? Yeah, people can contact me by going, well, first of all, on YouTube and looking for Big Luca. So B-I-G-L-U-C-A, Big Luca. Uh, or you can go to BigLuca, BigMoney.com, and my website is there. But the, the best thing is YouTube. I am the most active on YouTube. I have more than 600 videos and many more to come. In the next year, I'll be over 1,000. So... Uh, it's great. Yeah. yeah thank you on. so much, Luca. I really appreciate uh, your time, really. Thank, thank you to you, Hamed, and I, I appreciate anything you do. My pleasure. Thanks, everyone. Be efficient and stay efficient, and see you soon with another leading expert.